The phonology of the Irish language varies from dialect to dialect, there is no standard pronunciation of Irish. Therefore, this article focuses on phenomena that pertain generally to most or all dialects, and on the major differences among the dialects. Detailed discussion of the dialects can be found in the specific articles, Ulster Irish, Connacht Irish, and Munster Irish. Irish phonology has been studied as a discipline since the late 19th century, with numerous researchers publishing descriptive accounts of dialects from all regions where the language is spoken. More recently, Irish phonology has been the focus of theoretical linguists, who have produced a number of books, articles, and doctoral theses on the topic. One of the most important aspects of Irish phonology is that almost all consonants come in pairs, with one having a broad pronunciation and the other a slender one. Broad consonants are either velarized that is, the back of the tongue is pulled back and slightly up in the direction of the soft palate while the consonant is being articulated or simply velar e k. Slender consonants are palatalized, which means the tongue is pushed up toward the hard palate during the articulation. The contrast between broad and slender consonants is crucial in Irish, because the meaning of a word can change if a broad consonant is substituted for a slender consonant or vice versa. For example, the only difference in pronunciation between the words bow cow and beo alive is that bow is pronounced with a broad b sound, while beo is pronounced with a slender b sound. The contrast between broad and slender consonants plays a critical role not only in distinguishing the individual consonants themselves, but also in the pronunciation of the surrounding vowels, in the determination of which consonants can stand next to which other consonants, and in the behavior of words that begin with a vowel. This broad, slender distinction is similar to the hard, soft one of several Slavic languages, like Russian. The Irish language shares a number of phonological characteristics with its nearest linguistic relatives, Scottish Gaelic and Manx, as well as with Hiberno-English, with which it is in the closest language contact. Topic history of the discipline Until the end of the 19th century, linguistic discussions of Irish focused either on the traditional grammar of the language issues like the inflection of nouns, verbs and adjectives or on the historical development of sounds from Proto-Indo-European through Proto-Celtic to Old Irish. The first descriptive analysis of the phonology of an Irish dialect was Fink 1899, which was based on the author's fieldwork in the Aran Islands. This was followed by Quiggan 1906, a phonetic description of the dialect of Minawanya near Glenties, County Donegal. Peterson 1909 is predominantly a historical account, but has some description of modern dialects as well. Alf Sommerfeld published early descriptions of both Ulster and Munster varieties Sommerfeld 1922 and Sommerfeld 1965 for the village of Tor in Guidor, Sommerfeld 1927 for Munster, and Sommerfeld 1929 for the now extinct dialect of South Armagh. The dialect of Dunquin on the Dingle Peninsula was described by (1931). From 1944 to 1968 the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies published a series of monographs, each describing the phonology of one local dialect, O'Quiv for West Muscari in County Cork Ballyvorney, Coolia and vicinity, De Baldrythe first published 1945 for Quaferge in County Galway Barna, Spittle, Inverin and vicinity, Bretnock for Anrin, County Waterford, De Burka for Tormakiti in County Mayo, Wagner 1959 for Teelan, County Donegal, MHAC and Felli 1968 for Eris in County Mayo. More recent descriptive phonology has been published by Lucas 1979 for Rosgal in Northern Donegal, Hughes 1986 for Tangaveen and Kameen also near Glenties, Ocurnane 1996 for Eora's Aethnich in Connemara Kilkiran and vicinity, and Ose 2000 for the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry. Research into the theoretical phonology of Irish began with O. C. Adale and Wigger 1975, which follows the principles and practices of the sound pattern of English and which formed the basis of the phonology sections of O. C. Adale 1989. Dissertations examining Irish phonology from a theoretical point of view include Ni Chiosane 1991, Green 1997 in Optimality Theory, and Siren 1997 and Block Rosmedge 1998 in Government Phonology. Consonants 
Most dialects of Irish contain at a minimum the consonant phonemes shown in the following chart see International Phonetic Alphabet for an explanation of the symbols. The consonant, H, is neither broad nor slender. <laughs> On and off glides Broad velar or velarized consonants have a noticeable velar offglide a very short vowel like sound before front vowels which sounds like the English w but made without rounding the lips the ipa symbol for this sound is thus naoi n i 9 and caoi ki way manner are pronounced n i and ki respectively this velar offglide is labialized pronounced with lip rounding like w after labial consonants so bui bi yellow is pronounced by similarly slender palatal or palatalized consonants have a palatal offglide like english y before back vowels eg tuba tu thick is pronounced tju when a broad consonant follows a front vowel there is a very short vowel sound called an onglide just before the consonant eg dial dil cell is pronounced dil Similarly, when a slender consonant follows a back vowel, there is an onglide i before the consonant, e.g. 8, a t, place is pronounced o i, t, oil, o l, drinking gen, is pronounced o i, l, mebher per meter u, understanding is m u i, and dwin, d, u n, to us is d, u i, n. Allophones <laughs> <laughs> With which can be written as bh, mh, or v has two basic allophones, the labiovelar approximant w and the velarized voiced labiodental fricative v. The distribution of these allophones varies from dialect to dialect. In Munster, generally only v is found, and in Ulster generally only w is found. In connect, w is found word initially before vowels, e.g. bh fool, well, is, and v in other positions, e.g. naomh, n, i, v, saint, fomhar, f, u, v, autumn, and brosti, v, s, t, hurried. The remaining labial fricatives are typically labiodental, f, f, v, but they as well as the fricative allophone, v, of, with, have bilabial allophones, beta, beta, in many dialects. The distribution depends partly on environment, bilabials are more likely to be found adjacent to rounded vowels, and partly on the individual speaker. Among the coronals, most are alveolar, but the broad stops and lateral are typically dental, t, d, n, l, and the slender coronal fricative is typically postalveolar. The slender coronal stops t, d, may be realized as alveolo-palatal affricates t, d, in a number of dialects, including Tormakiti, Eris, and Tilan. The slender dorsal stops c, may be articulated as true palatals c, or as palatovelars k. The phoneme j has three allophones in most dialects: a palatal approximant j before vowels besides i, and at the ends of syllables, e.g. dias, jas, nice, b, bj, will be a voiced post palatal fricative before consonants, e.g. green, in, sun, and an intermediate sound j with more frication than j, but less frication than before i, e.g. dirig, j i, straightened, as in English, voiceless stops are aspirated, articulated with a puff of air immediately upon release at the start of a word, while voiced stops may be incompletely voiced but are never aspirated. Voiceless stops are unaspirated after s and e.g. scanera, s kau, one, terror. However, stops remain aspirated after the clitic is s, e.g. as cam, s k a u m, it's crooked. Several researchers, e.g., O. Quiv, 1944, Wagner, 1959, De Baldrythe, 1966, M. H. A. C. and Feli, 1968, and O. Say, 2000, use transcriptions like S. B. S. D. S. X. D. etc., indicating they consider the stops that occur after voiceless fricatives to be devoiced allophones of the voiced stops rather than unaspirated allophones of the voiceless stops, as is actually the case in Scottish Gaelic, but this is a minority view. Topic. Fortis and Linus sonorants In Old Irish, the sonorants those spelled L -N -R -M were divided not only into broad and slender types, but also into fortis and linus types. The precise phonetic definition of these terms is somewhat vague, but the coronal fortis sounds those spelled L -N -R were probably longer in duration and may have had a larger area of contact between the tongue and the roof of the mouth than the linus sounds. 
Fortis M was probably a normal M, while Linus M was a nasalized semivowel W, perhaps tending towards a nasalized fricative V or B when palatalized. By convention, the Fortis coronals are transcribed with capital letters L and R, the Linus with lowercase L and R. Some authors, such as Stifter 2006, instead use Latin L and RM for Fortis and Greek lambda nu rho mu for Linus. Thus Old Irish had four rhotic phonemes, R, 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 four lateral phonemes, L, 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 and four coronal nasal phonemes, N, 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 N. Fortis and Linus sonorants contrasted with each other between vowels and word finally after vowels in Old Irish, for example berade, b er eth, he shears versus berade, b er eth, he may carry, call, coal, hazel versus call, coal, essen, sun, s on, stake versus sun, s on, sound. Word initially, only the Fortis sounds were found, but they became Linus in environments where morphosyntactically triggered lenition was found, run, r-u-n, mystery versus a run, a-r-u-n, his mystery, lon, l-o-n, provision versus a lon, a-l-o-n, his provision. In the modern language, the four rhotics have been reduced to two in all dialects, r, 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 having merged as for the laterals and nasals, some dialects have kept all four distinct, while others have reduced them to three or two distinct phonemes, as summarized in the following table. As for Fortis and Linus M, in time the Linus version nasalized semivowel or labial fricative came to be pronounced as a regular semivowel or fricative along with nasalization of the preceding vowel. The later loss of with between vowels has resulted in phonemically nasalized vowels in some modern dialects see below, but these are not robustly maintained in any dialect. The strong tendency is to eliminate the nasalization entirely. The original nasalized semivowel is still reflected as mh in the spelling, however. Topic: <laughs> Vowels. The vowel sounds vary from dialect to dialect, but in general Connacht and Munster at least agree in having the monophthongs i, u, e, o, a, a, and schwa, which is found only in unstressed syllables, and the falling diphthongs i, u, i, and u. The vowels of Ulster Irish are more divergent and are not discussed in this article. Topic vowel backness The backness of vowels that is, the horizontal position of the highest point of the tongue depends to a great extent on the quality broad or slender of adjacent consonants. Some researchers e o. Seadale and Wigger 1975-80-82, Oseadale 1989-35-37, Ni Chiosane 1994 have argued that and are actually allophones of the same phoneme, as are and as in a vertical vowel system. Under this view, these phonemes are not marked at an abstract level as either front vowels or back vowels. Rather, they acquire a specification for frontness or backness from the consonants around them. In this article, however, the more traditional assumption that are four distinct phonemes will be followed. The descriptions of the allophones in this section come from Osei 2000 -20 the pronunciations therefore reflect the Munster accent of the Dingle Peninsula. Unless otherwise noted, however, they largely hold for other Munster and Connacht accents as well. <laughs> <laughs> Close vowels the four close vowel phonemes of Irish are the fully close i and u, and the near close and. Their exact pronunciation depends on the quality of the surrounding consonants. I is realized as a front i between two slender consonants, e.g., tier t i r country. Between a slender and a broad consonant, the tongue is retracted slightly from this position, for which the IPA symbol is i, e.g., dial d i l, sail kawar ki, berry gen. Between two broad consonants, the tongue is retracted even further, almost to the point of being a central vowel in IPA, I diaresis, kaora, ki diaresis, sheep. U, is a fully back U between broad consonants e.g. dun, d, u, n, fort, but between a broad and a slender consonant, the tongue is somewhat advanced IPA, U, e.g. trior, t, u, three people, sweel, s, u, l, i. Between two slender consonants, it is advanced even further, to a centralized vowel IPA U diaresis, chewin C U diaresis N quiet. The near close vowels and show a similar pattern. Is realized between slender consonants as a front I, e.g. tie, ti, 
house dat. After a slender consonant and before a broad one, it is a near front, e.g. geota t, peace. After a broad consonant and before a slender one, it is a more retracted, e.g. tuijan t, n, understands. Finally, between two broad consonants it is a central, e.g. gort t, two, salty. Is a near back, when all adjacent consonants are broad, e.g. dubh, d, v, black, and a more centralized, after a slender consonant, e.g. jobal, b, l, rag. Topic. Mid vowels The realization of the long close mid vowels, e, and, o, varies according to the quality of the surrounding consonants. E is a front e between two slender consonants, e.g. beich, b e c, yell, a centralized e diaresis between a broad and a slender consonant, e.g. gleo, l e diaresis, call, and a more open centralized between two broad consonants, e.g. b a o l, b l, danger. O ranges from a back o between two broad consonants, e.g. fod, f o d, turf, to an advanced o. Between a broad and a slender consonant, e.g. foid, f o d, turf, gen, to a centralized o diaresis between two slender consonants, e.g. c oil, c o diaresis l, music, gen. The short open mid vowels also vary depending on their environment. Short ranges from a front between slender consonants, e.g. b, b, will be to a retracted between a broad and a slender consonant, e.g. bead, b d. I will be, rabe v was to a central when the only adjacent consonant is broad e.g. croach k cross dat, short, between two broad consonants is usually a back, e.g. clock k l x stone, but it is a centralized o adjacent to nasal consonants and labial consonants, e.g. anson and s on, there and bog b o diaresis soft. Between a broad and a slender consonant, it is a more open, scoil s k l school, d h d x drink. Unstressed is realized as a near close, near front, when adjacent to a palatal consonant, e.g. pice, pic, pike. Next to other slender consonants, it is a mid-centralized, e.g. sail, s -a -l, salt water. Adjacent to broad consonants, it is usually a mid-central, e.g. eolas, o -l, s, information, but when the preceding syllable contains one of the close back vowels, u, it is realized as a mid-centralized back, e.g. dunna, d, u, n, Closing, M U C A M K pigs. Topic Open Vowels. The realization of the open vowels varies according to the quality of the surrounding consonants. There is a significant difference between Munster dialects and Connick dialects as well. In Munster, long a uh, and short a uh, have approximately the same range of realization. Both vowels are relatively back in contact with broad consonants and relatively front in contact with slender consonants. Specifically, long a uh, in word initial position and after broad consonants as a back, e.g. eight t place tra t beach. Between a slender and a broad consonant, it is a retracted front a. Uh, e.g. gearfid a, h, will cut, while between two slender consonants it is a fully front a, e.g. a sheen, ka n, john, v o c. In dingle, the back allophone is rounded to after broad labials, e.g. ban, b n, white, while in ring, county waterford, rounded, is the usual realization of a, in all contexts except between slender consonants, where it is a centralized. Short, a, between two slender consonants is a front a, as in gyrid, a d, three, short. Between a broad and a slender consonant, it is in most cases a retracted a, e.g. fear f a, man, and katie ka, t, worn, but after broad labials and l, it is a centralized front a, e.g. bale b al, town, loit l, at, for, injure. When it is adjacent only to broad consonants, it is a centralized back, e.g. mac m k, son, a bear b, say. In conic varieties, the allophones of short, a, are consistently further front than the allophones of long, a. In eris, for example, short, a, ranges from a near open front vowel, a, before slender consonants, e.g. sail, s -ail earwax, to an open, a, after slender consonants, e.g. geel, al, bright, to a centralized back between broad consonants, e.g. kapal, k -p -l, horse. Long, a, on the other hand, ranges from a back between broad consonants, e.g. bad, b -d, 
boat to an advanced back before slender consonants e.g. fail fl to get to a centralized back after slender consonants e.g. brea b fine in Tormakidi, the back allophone is rounded to after broad labials e.g. ban bn white in Connemara, the allophones of a uh, are lengthened in duration, so that only vowel quality distinguishes the allophones of a uh, from those of a. Uh. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Diphthongs. The starting point of i ranges from a near open central after broad consonants to an open mid centralized front after slender consonants, and its end point ranges from a near close near front before slender consonants to a centralized before broad consonants. Examples include clad hair KL, rogue, gadar dog, sil CL, church, and li is LS cure. The starting point of U ranges from a near open central after broad consonants to an open mid-advanced central after slender consonants, and its end point ranges from a near close near back before broad consonants to a centralized before slender consonants. Examples include Bodhar b deaf, Phoebus fs improvement, Labhert l t speak, and Meebhar m memory. In West Muscari and the Dingle Peninsula, however, the starting point of u is rounded and further back after broad consonants, e.g. Gabhar goat. The starting point of i ranges from a close front i after slender consonants to a retracted i after word initial broad, the only context in which it appears after a broad consonant. Its end point ranges from a mid-central before broad consonants to a close mid-centralized front e before slender consonants. Examples include seal sil, sense, riamh I, v, ever, and diabale d -ile, devils. The starting point of u is consistently a close back u while the end point ranges from to thu is hus above uan un, lam, buil, bul strike. Topic: Nasalized vowels. In general, vowels in Irish are nasalized when adjacent to nasal consonants. For some speakers, there are reported to be minimal pairs between nasal vowels and oral vowels, indicating that nasal vowels are also separate phonemes. These generally result from an earlier nasalized semivowel w, historically the lenited version of per meter, that has since been lost. However, the contrast is not robust in any dialect. Most published descriptions say that contrastively nasal vowels are present in the speech of only some usually older speakers. Potential minimal pairs include those shown in the table below. In addition, where a vowel is nasalized because it is adjacent to a nasal consonant, it often retains its nasalization in related forms where the consonant is no longer nasal. For example, the nasal per meter of mather m a tilde h mother is replaced by nonnasal with in the phrase a mather w a tilde h his mother, but the vowel remains nasalized. Similarly, in snichta n axed snow the vowel after the n is nasalized, while in ansnukta t axed the snow gen the n is replaced by in some northern dialects, but the nasalized vowel remains. Phonotactics The most interesting aspects of Irish phonotactics revolve around the behaviour of consonant clusters. Here it is important to distinguish between clusters that occur at the beginnings of words and those that occur after vowels, although there is overlap between the two groups. <laughs> Word initial consonant clusters Irish words can begin with clusters of two or three consonants. In general, all the consonants in a cluster agree in their quality, i.e. either all are broad or all are slender. Two consonant clusters consist of an obstruent consonant followed by a liquid or nasal consonant however, labial obstruents may not be followed by a nasal. Examples from Ni 1999 include bleen, b l a n, milking, brea, b a, fine, senite, k n, ap, button, deli, d l i, law, nath, n, a, usual, pleadche, p l ik, idiot, slios, l s, slice, sneechta, n axed, Snow, Toluth, T, L, U, Poker, and Tianeth, T, N, U, long for. In addition, S, N, may be followed by a voiceless stop, as in Sparan, S, P, O, N, Purse, and Skial, C, L, Story. Further, the cluster per meter N, occurs in the word emna per meter N, a, women, and a few forms related to it. 
three consonant clusters consist of s, or plus a voiceless stop plus a liquid. Examples include skliuches, cluxes, rumpus, screed, c ad, scream, splonk, spl, ak, flash, sprawi, spi, thun, and striok, tik, streak. One exception to quality agreement is that broad s is found before slender labials and for some speakers in Connemara and Dingle before c as well. Examples include smera sme, berries, spiel spl, scythe spleech splx, dependent spreag spa, inspire, and skiel cl, tilde scel, story. In the environment of an initial consonant mutation, there is a much wider range of possible onset clusters, for example, in a lenition environment the following occur, b halaz, wl, as, tasted, bris, v, broke, cleaked, cl axed, practiced, krom, xm, bent, grimai, jm, stuck, gomhai, jniw, acted, schlemne per hecto liter un, slipped, schnam, hn, a with, swam, schroich, hc sedilla, reached. In an eclipsis environment, the following are found, mblath per meter l, a, flower, mb liana, ml in, years, embris fi, m a, u would break, endlith, n, l, u, warp, n droiched, north, hd, bridge, andreameyer, n e m, ladder, nileus fa, l e s a, u would dress, engredfa, at, a, u would leave, nigniamhafa, n i woha, u would act. In Donegal, Mayo, and Connemara dialects but not usually on the Aran Islands, the coronal nasals, n, n, can follow only, s, respectively in a word initial cluster. After other consonants, they are replaced by, c n o c, k k, hill, emna per meter a, women, g n a o i, i, liking, t n t, u, long for. Under lenition, s n, n, become, h n, h n, as expected in these dialects, but after the definite article and they become, t, T, snichta, n axed, snow, schnuckta, h n axed, snow, lenited form, and snuckta, t axed, the snow, gen. Post vocalic consonant clusters and apenthesis Like word initial consonant clusters, post vocalic consonant clusters usually agree in broad or slender quality. The only exception here is that broad, not slender, appears before the slender coronals, t, d, n, l, beert, b, t, two people, seared, c, e, d, trade, dersha, d, o, doors, dornan, d, u, n, i, n, handle, comherly, ku, l, advice. A cluster of l, l, or n, n, followed by a labial or dorsal consonant except the voiceless stops, p, p, k, c, is broken up by an epenthetic vowel. Borb, b, b, abrupt, gorm, m, blue, dirmid, d, a, m, d, mistake, dirfa, d, a, f, certain, sirbis, v, i, service, feard, f, a, anger, dorcha, d, x, dark, dalba, d, al, b, bold, colm, k, l, m, dove, soilber, s, l, v, pleasant, gilvan, al, own, sparrow, b, i, n, b, b, n, b, venom, banba, b, n, b, a name for Ireland, a, i, n, m, an m, name, meanma, m, an m, mind, ain, me, and v, i, animal. There is no apenthesis, however, if the vowel preceding the cluster is long or a diphthong, ferber, f a b, wrinkle, teerma, t e m, term, laargas, l e s, insight, dualgas, d, ule, s, duty. There is also no apenthesis into words that are at least three syllables long, firmament, f m m n t, firmament, smile godden, s m l, d, a n, throat, kaserbhan, ka wa n, dandelion, carmeliteach, ka m l i t x, carmelite. Topic. Phonological processes Topic. Vowel initial words Vowel initial words in Irish exhibit behaviour that has led linguists to suggest that the vowel sound they begin with on the surface is not actually the first sound in the word at a more abstract level. Specifically, when a clitic ending in a consonant precedes a word beginning with the vowel, the consonant of the clitic surfaces is either broad or slender, depending on the specific word in question. For example, the n of the definite article and the is slender before the word iante wonder, but broad before the word aois age, and iante n -i -n -t, the wonder gen, versus an aois n -i, the age. 
One analysis of these facts is that vowel initial words actually begin, at an abstract level of representation, with a kind of empty consonant that consists of nothing except the information broad or slender. Another analysis is that vowel initial words, again at an abstract level, all begin with one of two semivowels, one triggering palatalization and the other triggering velarization of a preceding consonant. Topic lengthening before fortis sonorants where reflexes of the Old Irish fortis sonorants appear in syllable final position in some cases, only in word final position, they trigger a lengthening or diphthongization of the preceding vowel in most dialects of Irish. The details vary from dialect to dialect. In Donegal and Mayo, lengthening is found only before road, rl, rn, before rr except when a vowel follows, and in a few words also before word final ll, for example, bar, b at, top, ard, a d, tall, orlick, ol, ax, inch, turn, t, un, spinning wheel, thal per hectare l, yonder. In Connemara, the Aran Islands, and Munster, lengthening is found generally not only in the environments listed above, but also before noon unless a vowel follows and before m and ing at the end of a word. For example, the word pole whole is pronounced p -ule in all of these regions, while grim grip is pronounced im in Connemara and Aran and im in Munster. Because vowels behave differently before broad sonorants than before slender ones in many cases, and because there is generally no lengthening except by analogy when the sonorants are followed by a vowel, there is a variety of vowel alternations between different related word forms. For example, in Dingle Cian head is pronounced cun with a diphthong, but sin the genitive singular of the same word is pronounced cn with a long vowel, while siana the plural, meaning heads is pronounced can with a short vowel. This lengthening has received a number of different explanations within the context of theoretical phonology. All accounts agree that some property of the fortis sonorant is being transferred to the preceding vowel, but the details about what property that is vary from researcher to researcher. O. C. Adale and Wigger argue that the fortis sonorant is tense a term only vaguely defined phonetically and that this tenseness is transferred to the vowel, where it is realized phonetically as vowel length and or diphthongization. Ni Chiosane argues that the triggering consonant is underlyingly associated with a unit of syllable weight called a mora, this mora then shifts to the vowel, creating a long vowel or a diphthong. Carney 2002 expands on that analysis to argue that the fortis sonorants have an advanced tongue root that is, the bottom of the tongue is pushed upward during articulation of the consonant and that diphthongization is an articulatory effect of this tongue movement. Topic. Devoicing Where a voiced obstruent or, with comes into contact with, h, the, h, is absorbed into the other sound, which then becomes voiceless in the case of, with, devoicing is to, f. Devoicing is found most prominently in the future of first conjugation verbs where the, h, sound is represented by the letter f and in the formation of verbal adjectives where the sound is spelled th. For example, the verb squab, s cube, sweep ends in the voiced consonant, b, but its future tense squabfid, s cup, will sweep and verbal adjective squabatha, s cup, swept have the voiceless consonant, p. <laughs> Sandy Irish exhibits a number of external sandy effects, i.e. phonological changes across word boundaries, particularly in rapid speech. The most common type of sandy in Irish is assimilation, which means that a sound changes its pronunciation in order to become more similar to an adjacent sound. One type of assimilation in Irish is found when a coronal consonant one of D, L, N, R, S, T, changes from being broad to being slender before a word that begins with a slender coronal consonant, or from being slender to being broad before a word that begins with a broad coronal consonant. For example, feel, F al, Deceive ends with a broad LL, but in the phrase Deef Hall say Orm D -al -m, it deceived me, the LL has become slender because the following word, say, starts with a slender coronal consonant. The consonant N may also assimilate to the place of articulation of a following consonant, becoming labial before a labial consonant, palatal before a palatal consonant, and velar before a velar consonant. For example, the NN of Cian, can, 1, becomes M in Cian Bakash, Cam B a lame 1, and in Cian Carrick, a scabbed one. 
A voiced consonant at the end of a word may become voiceless when the next word begins with a voiceless consonant, as in lub say l -u -p -e, he bent, where the b sound of lub l -u -b, bent, has become a p sound before the voiceless s of say. Stress General facts of stress placement An Irish word normally has only one stressed syllable, namely the first syllable of the word. In IPA transcription, a stressed syllable is marked with the symbol to the left of the syllable. Examples include demi, dmi, left past tense of leave and isenwar, as n, o, dishonor. However, certain words, especially adverbs and loanwords, have stress on a non-initial syllable, e.g. amhain, wa n, only, tobac, t back, tobacco. In most compound words, primary stress falls on the first member and a secondary stress marked with falls on the second member, e.g. lagfortach, l, ft, x, spent bog. Some compounds, however, have primary stress on both the first and the second member, e.g. dirgbreag, d a v e, a terrible lie. In Munster, stress is attracted to a long vowel or diphthong in the second or third syllable of a word, e.g. kalin, ka l i n, girl, a chaney, ax n i, request. In the now extinct accent of East Mayo, stress was attracted to a long vowel or diphthong in the same way as in Munster. In addition, stress was attracted to a short vowel before word final ll, m, or nn when that word was also final in its utterance. For example, kapal horse was pronounced ka pl in isolation or as the last word of a sentence, but as cap l in the middle of a sentence. The nature of unstressed vowels In general, short vowels are all reduced to schwa in unstressed syllables, but there are some exceptions. In Munster, if the third syllable of a word is stressed and the preceding two syllables are short, the first of the two unstressed syllables is not reduced to schwa, instead it receives a secondary stress, e.g. spieladoir, spl, d, o, scythe man. Also in Munster, an unstressed short vowel is not reduced to schwa if the following syllable contains a stressed i, or, u, e.g. eli, a l, i, art, bileu, b a l u, gather. In Ulster, long vowels in unstressed syllables are shortened but are not reduced to schwa, e.g. kalin, cal in, girl, gallon, al un, gallon. Processes relating to x The voiceless velar fricative, x, spelled ch, is associated with some unusual patterns in many dialects of Irish. For one thing, its presence after the vowel, a, triggers behavior atypical of short vowels, for another, x, and its slender counterpart, c, interchange with the voiceless glottal fricative, h, in a variety of ways, and can sometimes be deleted altogether. <laughs> behavior of, x. In Munster, stress is attracted to a in the second syllable of a word if it is followed by x, provided the first syllable and third syllable, if there is one, contains a short vowel o quiv 1944-66. Examples include bikash, bkax, lame, and slisnecha, ln ax, chips. However, if the first or third syllable contains a long vowel or diphthong, stress is attracted to that syllable instead, and the a before x is reduced to as normal, e.g. I stitched, e t x, listen, moltakan, m l, h x a n, 5, weather, in Ulster, unstressed, a, before, x, is not reduced to schwa, e.g. eloch, al, ax, cattle. Interaction of, x, and, c, with, h In many dialects of Irish, the voiceless dorsal fricatives, x, and, c, alternate with, h, under a variety of circumstances. For example, as the lenition of, t, and, h, is replaced by, c, before back vowels, e.g. thabharfain, ku hn, 6, I would give, sheoil, ko l, drove. In Munster, c, becomes, h, after a vowel, e.g. fish, fh, 20. 
in ring, h, becomes, x, at the end of a monosyllabic word, e.g. scathe, s ka x, fear. In some Ulster dialects, such as that of Tory Island, x, can be replaced by, h, e.g. cha per hectare, not, and can even be deleted word finally, as in santach, s and, t, tha tilde s and, t, a, greedy in other Ulster dialects, x, can be deleted before, t, as well, e.g. seek, at, 7. Samples The following table shows some sample sentences from the Aran dialect. The first eight chapters of Peter Uliri's autobiography Mo Skial Fine at Wikisource include recordings of the text being read by a native speaker of Muscari Munster Irish. Topic. Comparison with other languages Topic. Scottish Gaelic and Manx Many of the phonological processes found in Irish are found also in its nearest relatives, Scottish Gaelic and Manx. For example, both languages contrast «broad» and «slender» consonants, but only at the coronal and dorsal places of articulation, both Scottish Gaelic and Manx have lost the distinction in labial consonants. The change of kn, n, Minnesota, etc. to km, etc. is found in Manx and in most Scottish dialects. Evidence from written manuscripts suggests it had begun in Scottish Gaelic as early as the 16th century and was well established in both Scottish Gaelic and Manx by the late 17th to early 18th century. Lengthening or diphthongization of vowels before fortis sonorants is also found in both languages. The stress pattern of Scottish Gaelic is the same as that in Connacht and Ulster Irish, while in Manx, stress is attracted to long vowels and diphthongs in non-initial syllables, but under more restricted conditions than in Munster, Manx and many dialects of Scottish Gaelic share with Ulster Irish the property of not reducing unstressed, a, to, before, x. Hiberno-English <inaudible> <inaudible> Irish pronunciation has had a significant influence on the features of Hiberno-English. For example, most of the vowels of Hiberno-English with the exception of correspond to vowel phones of Irish. The Irish stops t, d, are common realizations of the English phonemes, theta. Hiberno-English also allows, h, where it is permitted in Irish but excluded in other dialects of English, such as before an unstressed vowel e.g. hahi, hi, and at the end of a word e.g. McGrath per meter a. a. There is a penthesis in words like film FLM and form FM. Notes Carat 1 scanra is pronounced as if spelled asterisk scamrod, see Irish orthography. Squared gourd is pronounced as if spelled girt. Cubed gyrid is pronounced as if spelled garrid. Carat 4 loit is pronounced as if spelled lay. Carat 5 Moltachin is pronounced as if spelled asterisk Moltachin. Carat 6 Thabharfane is pronounced as if spelled asterisk Thierfane. Carat 7 Amhark is pronounced as if spelled Afarc. Carat 8 Sibh is pronounced as if spelled Sib. Carat 9 Tagaim is pronounced as if spelled Tigame. Carat 10 Chidier is pronounced as if spelled Chiatar. Carat 11 Fine is pronounced as if spelled Pine. Carat 12 labritir is pronounced as if spelled asterisk labritir equals equals footnotes <laughs>